shapes and styles, sharing art adventures and happy smiles. Climb aboard and let's get started. Art Pets, Art Pets, we are the Art Pets. Hi, it's lovely to see you again. Today I am going to show you how to paint the drawing of Fluffy that I did earlier. I will do this over several videos so that I can show you step by step. For this painting we will also use acrylics and before I start I will show you the materials that I am going to use. So let's go. So here I have the materials that I'm going to work with today. I have my drawing of Fluffy, which I've done it again since the first drawing, and I'll explain that to you in a few moments. I have my photograph of Fluffy. I have my colours, and not unlike when we painted Matilda the pink, I'm going to limit my colours today to three colours, and again I'll explain that in a few moments. I have my medium yellow, my sailor blue, and my crimson red, and my titanium white all of which I've already put on my Stay Wet palette and you may remember I explained to you how to make a Stay Wet palette. You can see I have a plate and on the plate I have some kitchen towel which I've wet with some water and then I've taken a sheet of parchment, baking parchment and I've put that on top and I've put out my white, my phthalo blue, my medium yellow and my red which are not unlike the three primary colours. And then I have my brushes, my large brush which I'm using for my wash, my medium, my medium small and my small all of which will probably be needed at some point in order to paint Fluffy successfully. I have my water and I have my kitchen paper or kitchen towel for cleaning my brushes when I am working. Okay, so that's pretty much everything. Let's get started on painting Fluffy. So as I said earlier, I've decided to paint this with just the three basic primary colours plus white, simply because in order to learn how to use colour, it's very easy to have lots and lots of different colours and to buy them in tubes. But it's important to learn first how those colours work. So what I like to try and do is to use a limited palette to begin with, to give it a chance just to practice mixing the different colours, and then you can add more colours to your range as you go along. And we'll certainly be doing more painting in the future with all of the different colours. But for now, I've gone with a medium yellow, a phthalo blue, crimson red and a titanium white and here they are already out on this and these are the four colours, three colours plus white rather, I'm going to use to paint Fluffy. And as I said earlier, I decided I really like my drawing of Fluffy that I did earlier on for you, the uh, stage one and stage two and I didn't want to paint over that, I wanted to keep it. So I did out another outline drawing of Fluffy as you can see here, which I'm going to use for my painting. Now, um, we're going to put on the first stage which is a wash. One of the reasons I love to paint with acrylics is that they are very versatile. Depending on the composition, you can start with a separated colour wash, as we did with Matilda, or with a single colour or monotone, as I'm doing today with Fluffy. This is usually a mid-tone, which helps to create a feeling of depth, weight and volume from the beginning of your painting. For Fluffy, I'm going to use yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a light brown colour and it's often known as the king of the palette because it's very important for warming up colours or for toning down colours. And I'm going to show you how to mix that. We'll use that as the wash for Fluffy. So I'm going to take some water, I'm going to start with a little bit of white, I'm going to add a little bit of yellow, then a little bit of red and you can see that becomes quite orangey and peachy. So I'm going to take more of that because I need quite a bit because I'm going to go all over now that's turned into too much green, so I'm going to compensate by putting a little bit more red, turning back into more brown, and adding more yellow into that. You can see it's becoming more of a light brown that I'm looking for. I'll add a little bit more white, and just as before, remember when you're mixing colours, just mix small amounts of colour till you get used to the colour that you're looking for. Otherwise you can end up with mud, and you don't wish to do that. I'm going to add a little bit more water to that. Now, and that's the sort of colour I wish to have first for this and that may be part of the colour I let show through when I'm painting Fluffy. One of the things you can do with your washes, it's a great way to play with paint, is if you didn't want to do just a standard wash like the ochre colour, you could put down any wash here. We could use a blue wash or a red wash and let little bits of that blue and red show through when we're painting Fluffy and that creates a painting that's a little bit more playful or a little bit more dramatic and perhaps we'll do something like that in the future. Now I'm just going to put this all over the surface. Now I've done out my drawing in a 2B 
so that when I put the paint over it, you can see it doesn't spread and I don't lose my drawing of Fluffy. Because it would be rather silly if I used a colour that obliterates, or if I used a, a pencil like a 3B or 6B that would simply spread when I put my wash over it. So we just put this around, like so. And you can see I'm not being too neat and tidy because we don't need to be now. I've already run out of colour, so I'm going to mix up more of my yellow, my red, and my blue. And the wash doesn't have to be the same colour on, on the on the base. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. So if it turns out to be slightly different, that's fine because all it does is add a little bit of depth. So we start with our darker colours to add a little bit of depth into what we have first. And we build from that dark to light. You can see it's a little bit more pinky. That's okay. Add just a little bit of playfulness into what we're doing. Now, because I've drawn this on a card, it dries out very, very quickly. As I said before, the acrylics dry really quickly, but even more so when you put them onto something absorbent like a card. After little bits of white showing through, that's perfectly fine. You don't have to worry about little things such as that. Now, and that is the basic flat wash that we're putting on. I'm going to rinse off my brush. Again, remember I said not too heavy, just very gently tapping against the bottom or swirling it is best. So that we don't damage the brush. Dry that off and leave that there in case I need that again in a few moments. Now, for stage two, what I want to do is, as I said, we work from dark to light. I want to go back over my drawing and create some of the darks that I see here to create a little bit more of a three-dimensional feeling to the drawing and the painting of Fluffy. I start with that three-dimensional idea, so I'm going to re-outline some of my darks through the, the outline of Fluffy, the eyes, the nose, the pattern, and also put in some darks on the background just to try and get a little bit more strength and depth into the base work that I have. Okay, so we're going to start with... I'll take my smaller brush to begin with because I want to draw out the details of the eyes and I want to be quite careful with those. So a small amount of water, I'm looking for a dark colour. So I'm going to take a little bit of red, crimson red and paler blue. And first off, I'm going to make a very dark violet by mixing the two of those together. Now this is my wash colour, so as before, uh, with your drawing, it doesn't have to be perfect from the early stages. And um, now is a good time to mention that Often, what we paint doesn't turn out as we had imagined it would. But that is okay. Remember that both drawing and painting are a journey of discovery and learning. To learn, you need to enjoy the journey and embrace the mistakes. This is how we learn, and it will be this way for as long as you paint. And this is what makes it so exciting and so enjoyable. And now I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to darken that slightly to give it an almost natural black feel because when you combine the three primary colours you create what's known as a natural black or a natural dark grey. I'm going to take that and I'm going to very carefully draw around the eyes on Fluffy. And as I said, painting is a journey and it happens over a period of time so don't look for perfection in everything that you do. Don't be afraid to be playful and expressive and take risks and see what happens. The beauty of acrylic is no matter what you do, if you're not happy with it, you can always come back and fix it. You can always come back and repair it. Then the same on the other side. You can see I'm putting in just the outlines of this other eye. And the pupil. And then I'm going to start just defining some of the pattern a little bit loosely. Not to be too neat and tidy. Now this is, as I said, the first stage. We'll be going back over this several times to get what we're looking for, so you don't have to be too perfect. Wait, that colour comes down around the eye. And I'm just tapping in small, short, sharp strokes to create the effect that I'm looking for. Here and there. And then there's another little bit of dark there. Then on the other side, I'm going to do the same here, just down there, and the same. You can see the triangular pattern coming out from the eye, creating a lovely little shape of light. Just you can see just a little bit of light around the eye here. Now, 
just block that in as we go along lovely from there I'm going to just put in a small little bit of color for the side of the nostrils you can see the two dots at the nostrils there the nose itself is pink so I'm not going to shade that in I'm going to leave that the color of the wash the mold and a little bit of shadow just here in the center of the mouth I'm going to just put in a little bit of that as well from there I'm going to just mix in a wee bit more color of my dark so a little bit more of the blue and the red and the yellow add a little bit of water to it make our sort of natural dark a natural black and we have the M shape up here and just block that in these are just your starting colors but it's important from the beginning to help to get a sense of the shape and the depth in your painting and the simpler this stage is the easier the rest of the painting will be because often what we try to do is to let little bits of these colors come through the finished painting to maintain a certain degree of simplicity because it's very easy to overpaint and we don't wish to overpaint we want to get the immediacy and the simplicity and of course the fluffiness remember as well that when you paint you're not just painting an image you're not just painting the cat when we paint something like fluffy an ugly or an animal like fluffy what we're trying to do is to get that lovely sense of softness and cuteness as a kitten that fluffy has so when we paint a scene we, we paint atmosphere and character some darks up here so we're trying to capture that and so to do that sometimes we need to be a little bit more expressive we need to be a little bit more playful we need to just change things up a little and mix it around so don't be afraid of things being a little bit different a painting is very different to a photograph in that way it can be photographic if you wish but it does not have to be just that there now what I'm going to do I'm going to rinse that again and especially with the small brushes be very careful just to swirl them because they damage easily if you dump them off the bottom just dry that off give it another little rinse to make sure all the colors out because acrylic dries so quickly on your brushes and you don't want to damage your brushes and I'm now going to go back into my big brush once more and I'm going to mix up a little bit of that dark more of it so once more the blue and the red and a little bit of yellow mix that natural dark black I've got a little bit more red so I compensate by adding a little bit more blue and a touch of yellow just to bring it back into something a little bit more tonal and I'm going to just introduce some of these darks that I see back here now you can see Fluffy is sitting in a basket but I don't think I'm going to paint the basket what I will probably do is just paint some dark colour fading into different areas of tonal lightness and medium colour as we go along just to create a feeling of softness and wispiness and fluffiness what's important to me is fluffy and fluffy's head so I don't want to complicate that by adding in too much of a detail in the background such as the basket weaving so we're just going to keep it all very light and very fluffy yay now just around the ears you can see I'm painting loosely in order to keep the softness about the ears because fluffy is not hard it's a soft little furry face and that's what we want to pick up that softness, that furries, that cuteness. And you can see the head starts to stand out a little bit more. And I've got a very loosely scratch in that washi because I'm using the side of the brush for a little bit of freedom to scratch in that washi tone there into that space as we go along. It doesn't have to be a flat background wash because that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for just a simple background at the moment to express what it is we see with the darkness and just to see Fluffy himself stand out. And as I said, we don't want to overpaint. It's always easy to add more colour, add more paint. It's much harder if you've done too much and to try and take it back out and create that simplicity. So less is always more. Now, while I have that dry brush, I'm going to add in little bits of soft shadow here. Little bits of soft shadow. So a dry brush is when you have very little colour on the brush and when you scratch it, you can see it comes across very gently putting in just a soft shade tone of colour so it's more like a medium colour that I'm getting because of that so it splits the difference between the basic wash of ochre I put on and the dark and natural black so it just has to give a little bit more shadowiness and my aim is to try and let some of these colours come through as I build into the second and third layers of this painting as we go forward into the next stages now and that is our first stage of the painting of Fluffy complete I think I just put a little bit of shadow into the iris as well just a little bit more depth there as well just so we see it slightly differently perfect okay so that's the end of our wash stage remember to keep it simple 
See you in part two where I will show you how to layer up with lights, mediums and darks. Enjoy painting your wash and see you soon. Bye.